Bonjour à tous, merci Hello. de nous rejoindre pour cet entretien. Merci de nous rejoindre pour cet entretien avec le EU Foreign Policy Chief, Joseph Borrell de l'Espagne. Il est aussi vice-président de la EU Commission. During the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and we will try to analyze with him the European initiatives and perhaps also to see what the Americans are doing. The Americans have predicted this for some time or seemed to, Joe Biden seemed to suspect this from a number of signals that he saw, but he also said that he would not intervene on Ukra Ukrainian territory. Do you think that that was a bad idea for him to say that? Look, President Biden has already said, and in the, not one, several times, that he's not going to intervene in a war in Ukraine. That NATO is not going to, to intervene in a war in Ukraine. He's sending troops to protect the NATO allies in the Baltics, the south of Europe, eastern Europe, but he told to everybody that he was not going to intervene. That's not something new. You can agree or not, but this Mr. B President Biden decision. What do you want me to say about it? What would uh, stop the war in Ukraine right now? The Ukrainians, the Ukrainians, the, the, the war is not over, the war is not finished. It's a fully-fledged war, it's a fully-fledged invasion, but the Ukrainians are resisting with a lot of courage. We cannot, I cannot say how it's going to finish because it's certainly not finished. And the army and the people of Ukraine is resisting to the Russian aggression. Have we done everything that we should have, according to you, Joseph Borrell, to avoid the war? We have these gradual sanctions. Perhaps they were too gradual. We have done a lot to uh, with mobilize all uh, our diplomatic capacities to high-level personalities of the European Union, the President of the Republic in France, in France, the German Chancellor, went to Moscow to negotiate, to put pressure on Putin. Putin ensured them that he was not going to invade Ukraine. He told them and he told everybody that no, and in any case, was thinking of invading Ukraine. So we mobilized our diplomatic capacities, and now we are mobilizing our capacities on the civilian side, because we are not a military union, to punish Russia from the financial and from the economic side, and also from the personal side, with a list of people who will be sanctioned, economic sectors in which we will stop our exports and our imports, but mainly our technological exports on the transportation and energy and technological fields, and we are blocking the financial, uh, the Russian financial capabilities in order to isolate them from the taking resources from the financial markets of the European Union and sanctioning a group of banks that will be also stop on their activities in Europe. We do what we can do as much as we can. 100% we mobilize our capacities in order to punish Russia and to damage the economy and mainly the people that rule in Russia. Alors Vladimir Poutine, Vladimir Putin ne voulait pas d'une extension de l'OTAN. Il a expliqué à NATO. He has said so several times. Today, some neutral countries, such as Sweden, are thinking that they might like to join NATO. They wonder if NATO is really protecting Europe or not. Is this counterproductive? Uh, look, every country has the right to decide their foreign policy. And their policy of alliances has been recognized since 1975 in Helsinki. I don't know what Sweden or Finland or whoever wants to do about their status and their po po political alliances. But it cannot be determined by a powerful neighbor using military pressure on them. A sovereign country must be able to decide what to do with respect to their foreign policy and their policy of alliances. If not, it would not be a sovereign country. Alors, justement, pour ce qui est des pays, effectivement. 
souverain. To sovereign countries, indeed. How far do you think Vladimir Putin will go in Ukraine? And do you think he may have incursions into other countries? You know that there are separatist, uh, the seeds of a separatism have been sowed in other eastern countries, in Moldova, in Georgia, and there are other conflicts brewing as well. I certainly don't know what Mr. Putin has in his mind and what are their intentions. But after having said so many times that uh, he was not going to invade Ukraine and doing what he's doing now, it's certainly not, it's not someone that you can trust. Not at all. Nobody can trust Mr. Putin after what has happened. He's not a reliable partner for anyone, especially not for us. Who can believe on the word of Putin after what he has been done and he's doing? I don't know which are their future intentions, but certainly nobody has trust on him. Can we completely exclude that the Americans or Europeans would have a military intervention through NATO, for example? The only thing I can say is that the European Union is not a military union. It has no the capacity to intervene military in a conflict. It has not been built for that. And NATO... I am not responsible of NATO, but the Secretary General of NATO and the President of the most important and most powerful member of NATO has said what they have said, that they were not going to intervene. They don't feel responsible for that. If you want to know more about NATO, ask NATO. Alors, euh, Monsieur Zelensky, euh, à Mr. la tête Zelensky, de l'Ukraine, a demandé euh, aux Européens et à la communauté internationale d'actionner ce qu'il qualifie d'armes nucléaires, en, en l'occurrence, qui marcherait sans doute selon lui sur Vladimir Poutine, c'est justement de suspendre euh, son implication dans le système SWIFT, réseau le Swift intermédiaire. Banking system. All kind of actions are on the table. What we decided three days ago and what we decided, well, what the political guidance gave us yesterday, the European Union Council, it doesn't exhaust all kinds of measures that can be taken. Today, the European Union will meet on the format of the Foreign Affairs Minister's Council and will take decisions. Everything is on the table. This specific measure yesterday had not enough consensus, which doesn't mean that we can take it in the future. Est-ce que les 27 ne sont pas divisés précisément parce que certains estiment qu'ils ne sont pas divisés parce que c'est quelque chose qu'ils ont trop à perdre économiquement, notamment si les sanctions sont trop dures, en particulier en enlevant la Russie du système SWIFT, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont plus à l'est, justement, paniquent, et que les sanctions sont It's still a vivid memory of what has happened to them during the Soviet domination, especially the Baltic countries. All former members of the Soviet Empire who had been for years under the Soviet domination have a very dire remembering of what happened to them. So certainly they are much more afraid of having to pass from situations like this and they want to prevent and they want to put all the pressure in order to avoid any kind of Russian actions against them. And there are others who have other kind of considerations and we decide by unanimity and unanimity was not reached at that moment. It doesn't mean that it cannot be reached in the future. Everything is on the table, but this measure didn't get enough consensus in order to be taken today. Some member states have decided to suspend the pro-Kremlin news agency Russia Today because today it's also a war of communication and influence, a soft power war. Is this important also? Yes, very much important because Putin is not only willing to conquer land and to invade countries, he wants also to conquer the mind of the people. And that is what I'm saying from since quite a long time, a battle of narrative 
trying to explain why they do things. All the Russian narrative, if you have a look at the media and the officials, at the way they this widespread the understanding of the situation, is that in Ukraine was going on a kind of genocide against the Russian people, and the Zelensky is a criminal, is a nazist, and that they have to go and to take uh, Kiev in order to clean Ukraine of fascism and nazism. And this fight, this fight on the networks, on the press, on the media, is very much important because at the end people behave in according with uh, the understanding of the situation. And the understanding of the situation depends on the information they get. And we are also engaged in a battle about information, disinformation, what is true, what is false. And this battle is more and more important because the social networks and the new ways of people get in, getting in touch with each other and receiving information makes much more important the, f the way they perceive things. And this will be in the future one of the new battlefield on the war for power. This information is today a big threat to the European people. Merci à vous, Joseph Thank Borrell, you very much, Joseph Borrell, for joining us for this interview at France 24 as the Ukrainian war wages on.